Should you pack up and make Houston your brand new home? I've helped dozens of families successfully move here to the Houston Metro, but that doesn't mean that it is a great fit for you. So in this video, I'm going to give you some things that I like, some things that I love and some things that I really can't stand about living in Houston. I'm going to have I'm going to hold nothing back when it comes to what I think about moving to Houston. And hopefully at the end of that, you can make a great decision on whether or not Houston and the Houston suburbs are for you. If that sounds good, stay tuned. And diving right into it, the, the number one con that I have to say about living in Houston is the driving. Driving here is miserable. Now, this comes as someone that is a little bit biased. I'm in the real estate space. I'm traveling to and from every end of the greater Houston metro on an almost daily basis. And so I just see probably the worst of the worst of people in traffic, people getting out of work traffic. You name it. Driving here is awful. And because there are literally parts of Houston that can be an hour away from Houston on a on a decent day, you are, are at least a 45 minute drive from wherever you need to go. And that's on a decent day, light traffic to no traffic at all. And so a byproduct of always being in traffic, you'll start to see. And as a matter of fact, when you get off of this video, Google road rage Houston, you'll see tons of stories of road rage cases here in Houston. And I think it's just because everybody here hates driving. And because of that, it's just one of those things that you just deal with. You never really get used to it. I've been here going on almost 10 years now at this point and and driving here to me is just this stressful thing. And you unfortunately can't get away without having a car here. Things are so spread apart. You have to be able to drive and you have to be fairly mobile here to, to have anywhere remotely close to a decent time here. Um, even though we are a big city, we're just not set up to have the public transportation. You're going to have to have a car here. You're going to have to drive here. And many times that drive is going to be pretty extended as this is a pretty big commuter city. So my number one con here for sure is that driving here is miserable. Traffic here is just really bad. There are situations in Houston where you are an hour away from another spot that is also in Houston. And so driving, you just never get used to that here. The second thing that you got to know about moving to the greater Houston Metro, and this is not a not so fun fact, and that is that Houston is basically top five or top 10 in pretty much any major crime that you could have. So that's people trafficking, that's that's drug trafficking, that's you name it. We're we're pretty much up there when it comes to crime, specifically in the greater Houston metro. Now, things get a little bit better as you move out to the suburbs. But for the most part, this is one of those things that I tell anybody that's moving here. Yes, there is a southern hospitality. Yes, there is a certain level of charm when compared to some of the other big cities that I visited, but you have to have your wits in and you kind of have to be on the swivel, as I like to say. And so there are places that I don't want to be at certain times. There's locations that I just will not be at certain times. There's certain places that I don't want my wife and my daughter without me. That is just comes with being in a big city. No big city is different, but it's something that you have to kind of be cognizant of when you move to the greater Houston Metro mainly because we don't have deed restrictions specifically in the city we don't really have zoning and very strong deed restrictions and so you can have a lot of mixed use uh, real estate next to each other you can have apartments very close to housing we live in a situation where there's really old apartments next to our they're not brand new anymore but at the time brand new townhome community which is right around the corner from million dollar homes just all within walking distance of where we live and so because of that, you have a lot of socioeconomic clashes that just kind of happen and that manifests itself in different ways. And some of the more affluent areas, it is thefts and break ins and people stealing your your converters off your trucks or people breaking in and stealing your bike or stealing plants or just silly things that happen around the city in more affluent areas. And some of the dodgier areas on the fringe, you might get a little bit more violence. You might get a little bit more assault. You might get shootings and things of that nature. So it's something that is not fun to talk about. But as you're in the city of Houston, Houston is like top 10 for pretty much every crime. And it's something that you just kind of have to have your your thoughts and your wits in about you at all times and just kind of be scanning there and ready for whatever. Um, and as you go out to the suburbs, it's not to say that that's just hunky dory peaceful. It gets a little bit better, but still, even in some of our affluent suburbs, you you have to be 
on 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 go and just kind of ready for whatever to happen. It's not to scary It's not to say that I've had any personal things happen to me. Like I said, we've been here all almost 10 years and thankfully nothing has happened. Hopefully it continues to be that way for my family. But I do have family and friends that have had break ins or little petty thefts and things happen even in some really nice suburbs. So the, the second thing that you got to know and think about is that crime here is pretty off putting and it's just something that is just kind of a fact of being in a fairly large city like Houston. The third thing that typically comes up is the question about property taxes. Are property taxes really that high? Is it really a big deal? And I look at property taxes in a more positive light because I understand that property taxes basically fund and pay for all the beautiful things that there is to, to know and love about Houston. And so I have a more positive light of it, but property taxes are, are pretty damn high out here. I've seen some of my friends that are looking at real estate in other places. I think California has like a property tax cap out there. I believe it's at like low two or like mid ones or something like that. And so even though their real estate is much more expensive, the property taxes that they're going to pay on that real estate can sometimes be lower than what you would pay here for a much cheaper on paper, cheaper house. And similarly with New York, from what I've seen, I've seen them have a lot of their property taxes in the mid to upper ones compared to where we are and even some of the more. I would say uh, adventurous neighborhoods like where we live, we have a property tax that is like 2.3 and that's on the low end. That's on the extreme low end for us. As you go into some of more rural properties or if you get a little bit older, you can have some property taxes that are in the, the mid to upper ones. But for the most part, you're going to be in the greater Houston, Harris County area. You're going to be somewhere in that like two to two point five on average. And as you go into brand new construction, like many of my clients look at or if you're looking in these luxury communities, many times the property taxes out there are going to be three percent and higher. So if you have a barrier of entry of, you know, four or five hundred thousand and you got a property tax of like starting at three percent, you're going to be paying over a thousand dollars a month in many of our more affluent and nicer communities, especially on a new construction side. So are there benefits to the property taxes? Yes, for me, because I see, you know, all the parks that we have, the walking trails, the lakes and all these things that we have access to that is all funded out of our property taxes. And so I do see the positive of it, but as someone that may be coming from somewhere that doesn't have property taxes that high, that can be a sticker shock and something that you kind of have to think about and be ready for when you're looking to purchase a home here in the greater Houston Metro. The fourth thing that typically comes up is the question about flooding. That's usually one of the biggest elephants in the room. How is flooding? Is it something that I should be worried about in this specific area? And in the Houston Metro, unfortunately, there's really nowhere that is completely 100 percent safe. We are just not a place that is used to and can handle taking on big, heavy rains for more than I would say probably about an hour. If we take on heavy rains for like 45 to an hour at the bare minimum, we're probably going to have street flooding issues. And that's probably the most common issues that we'll have when it comes to flooding people see all the things about harvey and all the other major flood events that have happened over the last decade and specifically since we moved here to houston and people are always kind of freaked out about those you know generational kind of flooding hurricane storm issues that we've had the most common thing here is that you're going to get heavy rains more times than not and what that does to your specific area more times than not it has nothing to do with your house it's not gonna you know run you out of your house you're not gonna have to do all these fema claims any of these things that people can scare you about when it comes to moving here more times than not the biggest issue is going to be having to arrange your route to get to where you are specifically if you're a person like me and my wife where we have very low profile cars it's been raining here for the last two or three days kind of off and on but fairly consistently and I already know just based on my experience of living here, there's certain places in the Montrose area. There's certain places kind of around Rice. There's certain places around the medical center that I would avoid right now just because I know we have a lot of dips and we have a lot of places that hold water pretty consistently year round. Also, keeping in mind that it rains basically on average, like every three days here, I think it rains like 160 days, give or take here a year. Um, and so 
keeping that in mind somewhere at some point in time, it's probably raining around Houston. Um, and so you have to just be prepared for the fact that if you have a low profile car, you could potentially be stuck or you could potentially have to go somewhere or another route to get to where you want to get to. But I will say flooding is a real thing. And anyone that's ever worked with me will tell you that I preach over and over and over again, get flood insurance, get flood insurance, get flood insurance, protect your asset. No matter where you are, we're not in a flood zone and we have flood insurance because you just never know if something like a Harvey were to come, but that is not the norm. And I don't want you to be fearful that that is the norm. Um, but on our side, if it's a, a house that you're looking at or a neighborhood that you're looking at, there's things on my side as your realtor and your advisor that I can have resources to put in front of you to make sure that you feel comfortable about where you're living and all the risk associated with it. So no, every rain, you're not going to be flooded out your house, but you will have some impact if you move to the Houston Metro when it comes to raining and, and street flooding at the bare minimum. The fifth thing that we got to talk about, and this is one that I kind of get hit up and it's a more nuanced conversation. What is the political landscape like in Houston and the surrounding suburbs? And I pretty much have this same response every time living in Houston. It feels fairly different from living in the surrounding suburbs. And we have a lot of suburbs that are growing, that have beautiful communities, that have a lot of things going for it, amenities that some places just don't have throughout the Houston metro. But the trade off is, is that the further and further away you get from Houston, the more conservative it gets here. And Texas is a very conservative state. And so if you have a personality, if you have a, a, a voting thought that is a little bit more liberal, a little bit more uh, free thinking on that aspect of politics, then you're going to want to hover as close as you can to and around the greater Houston metro. Now, that's not to say that there aren't some instances where you're going to see some heavy Trump support. I mean, this we freedom of speech. You got that. And there's going to be those those make make America great again flags. You're going to have the Trump didn't lose kind of banners just kind of in the middle of the city that happens. But typically, as you go further and further away from the city, things get more and more and more conservative. And whether or not, depending on what side of the fence you are, that could be a great thing for you where you feel like, hey, I, I love the conservative thought. I want to be around people that think like me. You have tons of suburbs that fit that thought process and where they are located. But if you are someone that is a little bit more liberal leaning and you are looking at some of our suburbs as a safe haven from maybe where you're coming from, are you looking at the school districts and you're looking for a better lifestyle or the type of home or the amenities that you want to have? Something that you're going to want to think about and kind of keep at the forefront of your mind is that as you move further and further away from Houston, things tend to get more and more conservative. And so definitely something to think about when you're making the move here. The political landscape is pretty liberal, pretty, pretty forward reaching in the, the actual center of the city. But as you go further and further away, the, the numbers on the, the voting history as far as being super conservative, it gets way, way, way more conservative the further you move away from Houston. Really quick while I got you, hi, my name is Aaron and I help families and busy professionals buy luxury and new construction homes around Houston, saving them time, eliminating stress, and hopefully having a little fun along the way. If you are considering a move to my area, I would love to be that go to and to answer any questions or concerns that you may have on the upcoming big decision. Call, text, email, hit the comment section down below and let me know if you have any questions at all. But without further ado, let's hop right back into the video. The sixth thing that people don't give Houston enough credit for is the overall diversity. There's just so many different people and backgrounds here in the greater Houston metro. And a byproduct of that is all those cultures mixing and bringing all of their gems, all of their food, all of the things that they love about their original home that they have brought here to Houston. Houston is a melting pot for so many things. And I love me being a foodie like I am. The food aspect of it is great. If you need some of that, that more original Louisiana style seafood like I love, we got places for that. If you need some some Texas barbecue, you got that. If you need some Jamaican food, you got that. You need some authentic feeling Chinese food, you got that. There's just so many places, so many things, so many backgrounds and cultures that have come here to make Houston home 
that you can pretty much get whatever flavor that you need from a culture or if you just want to feel like home any group that you have an affinity to you pretty much are going to have that diversity here in the greater houston metro and it really shines in the festivals that we get here and it really shines in the food and the overall things that just come here on a pretty consistent basis year round and so diversity is definitely one of those things that i really love about being in the greater houston metro is i've never lived in a place like that prior to that when i was in baton rouge that i really didn't really see that many different types of people when i moved to san antonio it was a little bit more hispanic leaning and so when i moved to houston and just to see all these different backgrounds of people from different countries different parts of the world different continents that was new to me as someone that has kind of lived in the south their whole life and so definitely one of the things that people don't talk about enough is how diverse Houston and the greater surrounding suburbs are. Another thing that I love about Houston is that there is always something to do. And it doesn't mean that you gotta break the bank to do it. I read somewhere that we got like 400 free parks to go to out here. We got walking trails, we got the bayou, which me and my wife love. If you're a sports enthusiast, we have all the major sports here from a professional college and competitive high school level. There's always festivals coming here. There's always going to be things like the rodeo that come here. That's a, this huge draw that people from all over the world come here to witness the rodeo and all the concerts and things that go along with that. If you want to, like I said, go to and be a concert enthusiast, you got people like Drake and, and Beyonce and all these big acts that are going to come here on a fairly consistent basis. So there's just literally always something to do i believe this year we're going to get the national championship for ncaa football as well we usually always have a pretty big branch for march madness it's just literally every every month that you could think of there is something that you can do here in houston and it doesn't mean that you got to break the bank because as someone that is as fairly frugal as I am, I love hitting up a park. I love going down to the bayou, just paying for parking and then walking that thing or working out down there. That's kind of more of my style. That's more of my speed. Um, but as far as whatever you're trying to do, if you want to do it, you can do it here in Houston. And I think Houston gets a bad rep for a lot of people because it doesn't have like this thing that is like a major draw to it we don't have the theme parks like we used to have we used to have Astro World back in the day we don't have that anymore we have a couple water parks but it's not super touristy like uh many other big places and so i think it kind of gets a bad rap of not having something to do but you literally can look on a calendar of events and find that there is something to do in houston damn near every day of the week another big reason why a lot of people hit me up to think about making that move to houston is that either professionally or as a family they are now making a lot of money and they are getting taxed a lot on the state income tax houston texas does not have a state income tax and so we might make it up in other ways when it comes to the property taxes but as far as your overall salary you're going to take you're going to have a little bit of a benefit to move to a place like houston texas versus some of these places in california for example where many of my clients are moving from and so definitely something to look out for just doing that analysis to say if i made that same hundred thousand in california and i made that same hundred thousand in houston how would i come out ahead more times than not the analysis shows that you're going to come out ahead by making that move just from your original state to move here to houston Another question that I get asked often is what are the schools like in Houston and the surrounding suburbs are so big that that's too much of a generic question. We got to dive in deep and see, you know, what specific neighborhood you're looking for? What needs do you do you have? Does your child have special needs that have, you know, special attention that they need? There are, are different systems that do different things better than others. Um, by and large, as you go further away from Houston, the school systems typically get better so your kd isd your sci fair isd your conroe isd Paraland isds a lot of these places as you get to our suburbs that are more well known and and beloved those typically have fairly highly rated school districts and that's not to say that all houston is all bad but on average if i had to say the greater houston isd most of those ratings are going to be somewhere in that like b to c range or lower and as you go out to the suburbs, you're going to be in that like B to B plus range and higher on average. Now, again, 
there are some communities that are so big that there are four or five, six high schools, elementary and middle schools within that community. And that's common throughout the greater Houston metro. So to ask like a blanket question of what are the schools like in Cyprus or what are the schools like in Houston or what are the schools like in Katy, that's too hard to answer without specifically knowing what area that you're going to be in, what the budget allows. But on average, as you move further and further away from Houston, the suburb schools tend to be and rank a little bit higher on paper. And that's at least according to great schools and niche.com. We can look into that more in depth as we know kind of where your lifestyle is bringing you, where work is going to bring you and where you want to live. We can get more in depth on that. But on average, Houston is a decent school district, but as you go further away to the suburbs, you're going to typically see those more higher ranked B plus and better school districts around the metro. The last thing that you got to know is Houston real estate market is booming. Fun fact, we have 14 of the top 50 master plan communities in and around Houston. And so a lot of the overall like national things that you may read as far as markets markets tanking and values going down and numbers crashing we don't really feel that here in houston because we have 14 of the top 50 selling master plan communities in the nation hovering around houston and we got some heavy hitters we got your bridgelands we got the sun terras which i believe is the fastest selling right now out in the katy area we have your Siennas, we have Meridianas, which is one of my favorite down south. A lot of families are building out that way. We have communities all over the Houston metro that are, are crushing the competition when it comes to being top selling master plan communities in the nation. And what comes with that is a wide variety of living and things that you can do. So if you want that boatable lake, you can get out there to town lake. If you want something that has a lot of walking trails, biking trails and, and amenities on site, Bridgeland is like 14,000 acres. And so that's just a lot of real estate for you to live, build. They're going to have commercial suites. A lot of places have their own HEBs, their own schools on site. You name it. There's just a lot of different variety when it comes to real estate in the Houston metro. Now, a little bit of a con to that is because the buyers are keeping it at a steadily growing pace. You're going to see that values, like I said earlier, compared to many places in the nation are fairly steadily going up despite having the interest rates that we currently have right now. And so I know a lot of people were expecting things to just crumble and fall. But in here in Houston is just not the case. We have so many people that are transplants that are moving here, kind of like yourself, probably if you are watching this video right now, that is kind of hard for values to drop a significant amount just because we have so many people that are moving here with so many lovely communities that have so many amenities compared to where some of my clients were moving from. I had a, a a couple that moved here, I won't say their names, but they share with me where they moved from and what was called a master plan community there is just like literally one of our small satellite communities here. It was literally just walking trails in like a hundred houses. That's nothing compared to some of these communities that are gonna have four or five, six thousand homes and acres of walking trails, pavilions, you got on-site coordinators for events, you got trainers, you got classes and all of these things that you can do in a community. So it, when it comes to real estate, no market compares to Houston, in my humble opinion. When you look at all the diversity of things that we got, all the different types of lifestyle and all the different top selling communities that we have here in Houston, you can't compete when it comes to a real estate variety standpoint. So having heard all that, if you're still here, I'm going to make the assumption that you're ready to make that move to Houston and call it home. I really think it's a great place. It does have some cons to it, but that's going to be the same with anywhere that you would move. But me and my family for right now, I think we're going to stay put. We love Houston and we love calling it home. And I think that you would as well. If you really enjoyed this video, I really think that you're going to enjoy this video right here.